today's webinar is on focal point and how we can use focal point, which is one of the uh, members of the perfect photo suite, to really kind of change the depth of field uh, of your shot or to change the plane of focus uh, to simulate a, a tilt shift lens. And we did this uh, webinar last month and it was really popular and I got a lot of questions about it, so I wanted to do it again. I added a few new images. We'll work on some new ones and some old ones. Uh, we'll work on some images that I, I am not even sure, like I looked at them, for instance, let's open this image up in Photoshop here. All right, so here's this image, and I took this image a couple weeks ago on Martha's Vineyard. It was a, a really, really chilly day, but it was otherwise perfect, and what was really nice about it was um, there was really no one on the, uh, on the island. It was me, and my wife, my two dogs, and my very good friend, Chris Lazari and we spent the entire day here and it was more or less uh, it was an opportunity for me to test out a new uh, neutral density filter that I just uh, had gotten the day before so this is a shot of the gay head uh, lighthouse it's literally I think at the end of Martha's Vineyard um, and normally this would probably be crowded with people and I think there are tours that go through here but uh, this was just around as the Sun was setting you could start to see a little bit of that gold narrow light so what we can first do, if you want, let's first just stylize it just for a minute. We won't do much because I know this is a focal point centric webinar. I'm going to just uh, get rid of uh, that little dust spot over there. There's a little dust spot over here. This is where you start to see my neurosis because I start seeing things and I start removing spots that might not even be there. Um, but the reason why I want to use focal point is I really want to focus on the lighthouse and these uh, the background here this the kind of shrubbery and the the uh, power lines and the power wires that just bums me out so the first thing I'm going to do here is let's um, let's toggle our on one palette and go into photo tools and I'm not going to do much to it I might just add um, a little bit of a golden hour enhancer to bring out the warmth in the brick so I'm, that's probably all I'll actually do let's just go to stylized effects go to golden hour enhancer and add that to the stack. Okay, and so that does a really nice job. I'm just going to probably keep it uh, on the whole image. I'm not even going to mask it out of the sky because I like what it does here. And the other thing that I might do is go to the lighting effects or, and then go to the dynamic light bug and use a light and planer because I want to lighten the foreground. So what I can do is when it comes up you've got this masking bug here and uh, I'm just going to rotate it horizontally make it kind of narrow and bring it onto the foreground here now now that's on the foreground what I can do is control the strength of it so if I just want to boost it up make it a little bit brighter and then I'm going to use the masking brush to paint it off of the um, the lighthouse I don't want the lighthouse to have that light I just want the grass to have the light which is kind of cool that you can control exactly where an effect is applied even though you use the bug and so what I can do is show my mask, just make sure that I kind of paint out the body of the lighthouse. Because the, the bug here, you can see the transition. So now we have the lighthouse lit normally. We can hit apply, render the changes. Okay. So that's, the, um, that's all I really would do with photo tools here. I wouldn't do much more uh, because it's a pretty image. Now with focal point, we're going to do two different things with focal point. We're going to first show you the standard way of using focal point. So we can go into focal point right now, and I'm going to reset our settings here to show you the, the standard view of focal point. So here is our focus bug. Um, it's anything inside the bug is in focus, and anything outside of the bug is out of focus. And you can control the position, the size, the shape, and the orientation of the bug by tugging at these legs. The legs are the um, lines with the uh, solid circles at the end of them. The lines with the hollow circles are antennas. And the antennas control sliders. But I prefer controlling the sliders uh, you know, at the slider view and not via the antennas. Now, now, we can change the shape of the bug from round to planar by going to the shape area here. And then what I'm going to do is the exact same thing that I did with um, that lighten masking, uh, masking bug in Photo Tools. I'm going to make it horizontal and narrow and put the plane of focus at the foreground. So if you think about it, guys and girls, 
the plane of focus is the this uh, strip of land that the lighthouse is sitting on. That's my plane of focus. Everything behind it and everything in front of it should be rendered out of focus. Now, and I see there's a, uh, John made a point, there's a lot of circular banding in the sky. Um, that is because of the distortion or the compression on uh, this GoTo webinar product. Like on my screen here, uh, it's perfect, but I, I see the recording and I do see the banding. Don't worry about that. That's simply because of the, the uh, bandwidth compression that you're seeing a, a slight degradation in image quality. Um, so in the banding, you uh, you would probably see over here and over here. Uh, so for the time being, just have a little bit of a suspension of disbelief that it, it looks beautifully blue and solid. Um, now, we for the most part have our plane of focus here. If you go to show the mask, you can see that our plane of focus is this kind of strip here. We can make it a little bit more distinct by dropping the feather which kind of reduces the transition. So you can see if we go to our, uh, back to our mask, you can see that as we adjust the feather, the transition becomes uh, more abrupt. But we still have whatever's above the plane of focus, um, or yeah, yeah, whatever is above this plane of focus, meaning the lighthouse, is also out of focus. The first, the easiest way uh, to do this is in focal point is to just grab a focus brush and start painting focus. And so as you start drawing, you get focus. The only problem is that it, you have to be kind of specific because as you paint outside of it, you also bring the sky into focus. So how do we combat this? Well, let's cancel out a focal point. And what we can do is we can use Photoshop um, to kind of protect certain elements. So in this case here, I'm going to use a quick selection brush. The quick selection brush is usually, the, depending on the orientation of your toolbar, if you have a, a vertical strip, it's the fourth icon down. It looks like a little paintbrush with a little, um, dan a little line of uh, marching ants around it. And the cool thing is, is it's got this edge detection. So as you draw, you don't have to make, it'll automatically detect edges for you. Now, sometimes it'll expand far, further than you want, but that's not really a big concern of mine right now. What I want is just to get an overall shape of the um, of the uh, White House. So I'm just kind of covering over here. The, uh, and the antenna over here I'm going to leave alone for now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, refine this selection here. If I hit, you can see, you see the, the uh, circle over here, the brush, and in the middle of it is a plus sign. The plus sign will add. So if you have a plus sign in the middle of your quick selection brush, it'll add to your selection. Now, if I hold the uh, the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC, you see how the plus goes from minus, plus to minus when you hit the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC? The minus will remove from the selection. So in this case here, I want to remove this little bit of foreground uh, grass. And it kind of snaps to the, t to the bottom of the lighthouse. So right now, for the most part, we've got the lighthouse selected. We can try to kind of... So, uh, remove this sky here. I'm not sure if I like that. Yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. Let me just add that back in. All right, so what would happen here if we sent this into focal point? Let me just refine this right there. If we sent this into focal point, what would happen is whatever is selected in Photoshop is what focal point will work on. So right now what's selected is the lighthouse which means that if you go in focal point right now, only the lighthouse will go out of focus, which is the complete opposite of what we're trying to achieve here. What we want is to render everything but the lighthouse. So what we can do is we can go to select and then inverse, and that'll select everything but the lighthouse. So it's essentially uh, select the inverse of whatever's currently selected. Now what we can do is go back into focal point. And because we have everything but the lighthouse selected, only the, the uh, that will be affected. So you can see here the lighthouse is perfectly in focus. We can control the amount of focus. So if we bring this down, we can kind of make this even narrower. And you can see how, for the most part, the lighthouse is in focus. We can increase our feathering, drop the amount of blur, 
Actually, let's drop the feathering a little bit. Because what I want is just the foreground to be in focus. I want the same plane as the lighthouse. And so you can adjust your focus bug to get the plane correct. Now, there are certain things that we want to kind of bring back in focus. We totally lost the um, antenna. So what we can do is we can, if we drop the opacity of our focus brush, um, actually, no, if we drop the amount, rather, we can start to see the antenna over here as it's starting to appear. What we could do is we can zoom in, and we can take our focus brush here with a very small size and a small opacity, or a low opacity, and we could start brushing that in. Now, the lower the opacity you have your brush set at, the more times you're going to have to paint over it. But it's nice because it gives you kind of a gradual transition into focus. If I had it set the opacity of the brush set to 100%, um, you might paint in more focus than you want. Here, this gives you a little bit of room for forgiveness. And we can kind of bring this wire uh, into focus too as well as the banister that we kind of brought out of focus because our selection was not refined. So now if we kind of go back to a full, full view, you can see now that the um, wire or, and the antenna are in focus as well as the banister. And let's say you want to have a little bit more focus in your foreground. Well, we can do the exact same thing. We can kind of paint along uh, the areas that we want. So we just kind of paint along the foreground here. And I'm, I very rarely will paint 100% opacity for focus or blur because it's too abrupt. I like kind of painting it in gradually. And that gives me full control. So now we've got, the nice thing is we've kind of created a shallow depth of field. We've simulated a very fast lens. And it also um, kind of renders all of these distractions out of focus. We can bring up the amount if we want to make it even further out of focus. And that'll really abstract that background. And we can kind of continue to go here, paint in, just so that we have uh, consistency across the, the our plane of focus. You want to make sure that you're consistent across the board. And so that's kind of the way we can do it. You can see if we deselect the preview. Really, to me, this background here is, is um, distracting and unattractive. Um, so by adding a little bit of this focal point, um, by and by making our depth of field even more shallow, um, we can kind of remove that distraction and bring our attention onto the lighthouse. And again, this was, this was literally the first time I worked on this image. I exported it out of my Lightroom catalog about three minutes before we started the broadcast. I want to look for fresh images. And a lot of times, I'll, I'll look for images right before the broadcast because it kind of gets me uh, you know, really jazzed up. And so I'm actually liking the way this, is, this would look. Um, before, before I would post an image like this on my blog, there are a few more things I would do. Like, we can hit apply, let focal point render its change, and the nice thing is that it applies photo tools and focal point render on their own layers. So you, if you decide down the line you don't want to use um, that layer, you could turn it off. So it's non-destructive. A few other things I might do here, like I might bring an adjustment layer and adjust the uh, levels a bit to bring up the highlights adjust the black point, and then maybe drop the overall brightness down. So that really brings out the banding again uh, that we saw that John pointed out earlier. Um, and that's OK, because uh, on my screen, it's perfect. And when I, if I were to export it, um, it, the compression would not nearly be as great as what you see on the screen. But you can see now how we kind of really made the image stand out with um, those levels. The adjustment palette, if you have CS5, I think with CS5, that was when they introduced uh, the adjustments as this palette here. Um, you just go to Window and go to Adjustments, and it'll pop up. Another thing that I like to advocate, this is a new, uh, I just got this new computer from On1, and I'm almost done configuring it. But here's something that I like to bring up a quick tip. You see, I like to have my Photoshop window is in an application frame. Normally, you can have it as a free-floating window, like you see here. The only problem is, um, oh, so Bill points out that the adjustment layers, the adjustment layers are in CS4. I don't know if this palette is in CS4, but it might be. 
Um, you see how the window is free floating? I don't like this because you have distractions of what's in your background. So if you have little files on your desktop, you'll see them. And I'm a big fan of removing all distractions. So the first thing I like to do is go to Window and select Application Frame. And right off the bat, that kind of um, blocks out the background. Another thing I like to do is clear out um, any unnecessary tabs. So like here, we go to Close Tabs. And what that's doing is it's just getting rid of these tabs that are taking up real estate. The last thing that I like to do is, you see this background color over here. Um, it's pretty, pretty bright, and I don't like the contrast that it's giving me when I'm working on an image. So if you go into Preferences, and then go to, I think it's under Interface, under the Standard Screen Mode, um, or the Full Screen with Menus, you can go to Select Custom Color, and I like to go somewhere dark um, with my custom color, because it'll kind of make the contrast less apparent. Um, I do the same thing in Lightroom. Here, that's better. It's not as distracting. I really can focus on the image. And in Lightroom, you can do the same thing if you right-click on the, oh, let me just wait for it to back up. If you right-click anywhere here outside of the image, you have these five options. And I usually do dark gray without pinstripes. It just helps kind of um, remove distraction, let you visually focus on an image. So here, again, let's just walk through the original. So here's our original image. We use photo tools really quickly to kind of boost uh, a little bit of the color. Focal point, the key ingredient, gave us a shallow depth of field and removed the background dist distraction. And then we just added a quick adjustment layer to, to pop the image. All right, let's move on to another image here. Um, there are going to be some themes, some recurring themes that I'm going to use here. Uh, this image we, we worked on in a previous session, but I think it illustrates selections again very well. This is the same um, basic concept of the lighthouse. This is a shot, this is an HDR image. Um, it was already processed in photo tools. Uh, and the plane of focus is this Jersey barrier. This was taken um, last summer in New York City. I just was walking through and I, I happened to see this Jersey barrier and I really, for, for lack of better words, loved the way it was kind of tagged. I thought it was kind of creative in a way. And I, I, I don't think that I would have stopped to shoot this if someone didn't already kind of um, tag it up, vandalize it. We don't condone vandalism on the On One webinars, but still, um, it's. I think it's a, a really cool shot. Now, the original point was that the background itself causes the Jersey barrier to get lost overall. It just gets lost. So what can we do about this? Um, well, we can use focal point. Again, with focal point, there are two ways to use it. We can go in straight away, just go to focal point, and if you're new to focal point, one of the things I recommend doing is this. Go to the edit menu in focal point and go to reset all. And what that does is it resets your settings to default. And this is important because um, it gives you a standard baseline, especially if you're getting used to focal point, you want to get used to the sliders. You don't want to get a bias by having um, the last use settings applied and that's what focal point will do is it'll apply the bug and the strength and the positioning um, of whatever shot you last hit apply on so that lighthouse shot for example so for this purpose we're going to change our shape again from round to planar now round is more if you want to simulate a lens baby look where you have a, a selective uh, focus area like a small portion so if we go here to back to round we kind of put the point of focus to this little hole here and we change our version this is also kind of important a lot of times I like when I'm working with a round bug I want to change the version from version 2 to version 1 and that changes the overall char characteristic of the blur so here what we can do is bring up the amount and you can see how what it does is it gives it a lens baby look the lens baby uh, look, apply, it almost looks like there's a radial or motion blur uh, applied to the image except for the sweet spot. So in essence, this is your sweet spot. And you can put it really wherever you want. You can bring up the amount and then you've got this motion slider. And so the uh, 
higher you bring it, the more of this motion effect uh, will be applied. And so you just kind of adjust it to taste. But we're not working with this here. Let's reset our settings here. We're going to work with a planar bug. And again, we're just going to adjust the orientation and the width of the bug and put it on our plane. You have to think about this in terms of planes of focus. Your planes of focus are typically a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. Now, the plane of focus is not the object itself, but rather the surface that the object is sitting on. So the surface that the object is sitting on is this plane right here. This is the plane of focus. And everything above it that's kind of perpendicular to that plane should be in focus as well. So in this case here, this does not make sense visually. Visually, you've got this portion of your plane in focus, but whatever's on, above it on the same plane is out of focus. So I hope that makes sense. What you need to do is restore focus. And so again, you could paint focus here and just kind of get that focus included, but you run the risk of painting outside of the lines, and then you start getting this ugly transition that we don't want. So if we cancel out, the first lesson is understanding planes of focus. So here, if we just take a, a brush and crudely draw what I would consider to be the plane of focus, it would be kind of this here. That would be very crudely your, your plane of focus. What's over here should be out of focus because that's a, the, you, what you're doing is you're simulating a shallow lens or a shallow depth of field with a fast lens. So the faster your lens, the shallower your depth of field. So if you shot this, say, with a 1.2 aperture lens like the 85, you might not actually have this uh, amount of room to play. Your plane of focus might be narrower like this, in which case part of this area and part of the back part of this area would be out of focus because your aperture is, is wide open. And so with focal point, you want to kind of simulate that. And we actually have lens profiles that we uh, analyzed and, and recreated the bouquet area. So let's just go to the history here and let's erase all that stuff. Now what we can do is the same thing that we did in our previous image. We can use um, a quick selection brush right here and just really quickly make the selection around our image and the quick selection brush really really works I'm really I've always been impressed with the quick selection brush there are some modifications we need to make like we want to add this little area here and you want to be important the way I like to do it is I'll trace with my eyes around the area so I get to this part here and there's a little section of the background that I need to remove so I'm going to hit the option key on the Mac or the alt key on a PC and just drag it out now, I also want to remove the holes because what's behind, what's through the holes here is not on the plane of focus of the jersey barrier. So let's just kind of, this is not really a technical jersey barrier, but I just call it a jersey barrier. It's a barrier of some sort. Um, so for the most part, I'm kind of happy with this selection. Uh, this is pretty good. I can always refine it. I also want to remove this area here. just because I want to be consistent. And I think I'm pretty good. Everything that should be in, uh, selected is, in, is selected. Now, again, the key. The key is right now, the, the only thing that's selected is the Jersey barrier. This is a concept that is important for you to get. Whatever is selected is what focal point will work on. We do not want focal point to work on the Jersey barrier. In fact, we want focal point to work on everything except for the Jersey barrier. So we'll go to select and then select the inverse option. Now the background um, and everything but the jersey barrier uh, is in play. So if we go into focal point and we just reset, I want to reset the bug again. You can see wherever we put the bug that'll be, the inside will be in focus plus the entire jersey barrier. So I can put the bug up here in the corner and now you have the Jersey barrier floating on air. Um, but everything else, including the bug, is out of focus. So what we can do is change the shape from round to planar. 
adjust the orientation and the width and then put it on our foreground so we're on our plane of focus so now we're starting to get somewhere now we're starting to get somewhere now we have a plane of focus because everything that's inside of the bug plus the barrier is in focus and James asks that question shouldn't you add the two holes of the front uh, the foot of the barrier these two holes right here I could have I don't need to because the bug itself is taking care of that so I'm not worried about that Howard asks a good question can you get the same effect with the lens simulations you developed yes so over here under the version there's a, a field called lens and if you drop down you've got these lenses that we actually simulated what these will do is, let's say I shot this with around a wider lens, like let's say a 50 millimeter at 1.2. It's going to simulate the amount of blur plus the characteristics of the blur for a wide angle or a wide open lens. The 51.2 is the fastest version of Canon's 50 millimeter lens. And at 1.2, your depth of field is extremely shallow, it's razor thin. Now, so this to me, this is way too much. We can simulate a different lens, like a 35 at 1.4. That'll give us a little bit more play. Um, but this is still too much blur because it's looking artificial. So what I want to do is drop the amount. The amount is the actual amount of blur. So I'm going to drop it down to you know only about 12, actually even a little bit less, because I'm not looking for a dramatic. Uh, Look kind of like a dramatic uh, ch shift in focus. I don't want it to scream out that it's out of focus or that it was manipulated. The other things that we can do is we have a little specular highlights that we can pop. We've got this highlight bloom slider that if I bring it up, it just pops these little highlights in the background. And then I can also um, drop down the brightness and boost the contrast of the background. Now there are a few qu uh, questions about can we simulate um, a tilt shift? So in this case here, we kind of could do that. Normally with a tilt shift lens, um, there are two practical uses for tilting your lens. Forget about shifting. We, don't, we won't talk about shifting right now. We're talking about tilting the lens. The, the primary thing that you're doing is you're changing your, the plane of focus of your lens. Normally when you put a lens on your camera, the front element of your lens is totally parallel to the sensor. When you tilt your lens, you're taking that front element and you're kind of curving it up or down or left or right. And what that does is it changes your plane of focus. Now, the two reasons you want to do that is to either create that uh, miniature toy model look that you see a lot of people doing. This is most effective when you are standing above your subject. So right now, I was actually kneeling in front of this barrier. If I was standing on a 10-foot ladder shooting down on it, I can get that miniature look, but because I'm kind of on the same plane um, as, or the same surface level as the barrier, you couldn't do that, or it wouldn't be as effective. The other practical use of a tilt shift lens is to extend your depth of field. Um, and I don't want to, basically what I can do with a tilt shift lens is I can get my uh, depth of field to be in focus, like perfectly in focus, through infinity. Um, beyond the uh, capacity of the lens if it was perfectly pa uh, perpendicular or per perfectly pal uh, parallel. So still, what we could do is simulate a tilt shift look. And the way we can do that is if you put your cursor in the body of the bug, so the bug's body is the center area. If it was a round bug, the, the body would be circular. But on a planar bug, is it's square. And if you put the cursor in the body of the bug and you press and hold the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC, and then you drag up and down or up or down, you can see how the directionality of the masking bug changes. And so what that does is it, it changes the characteristic of the out-of-focus area. And that's what you would do to simulate um, a tilt shift or that miniature look. Saul so asks an interesting question. So there is a film grain option here that you can add. So if you want, you can add some film grain. I've never used this option. I don't really see a need for it. Uh, I guess it would work better if uh, in a black and white image. I don't like film grain in color. But 
Saul's wondering if you change from version one to, from version two to version one. I think the film grain gets removed. No, it's still there. So you can use um, the film grain in version one. What it does is it primarily changes the characteristics of how the out of focus area is rendered. So I'm just going to turn that off. Now again, you can see that we can, if we want to increase the out of focus area, we just bring the uh, amount up a little bit. And what you can do is you can really, um, if you want to be really, really finicky about it, you can do this. Um, we can try to add a second focus bug. So here's another focus bug, okay? Here's our first one. Here's our second one. We can change it from round to planar. Again, put it on our middle ground. Remember how I said there are typically three planes of focus, your foreground, your middle ground, your background. We can add a transition from in focus to out of focus. So what we'll do here is we'll, the opacity is 100%. And what we can kind of do is drop the opacity of that bug so that we have a nice gradual transition for our, our um, middle ground area. Which is kind of cool, and you can turn that focus bug off, and you see how that, like, let's look at the, um, this little grate over here. You get a little bit more detail there. And if you turn it off, it just becomes uniform. So that's kind of, I'm always impressed, and I can tell when someone's used multiple focus bugs. Because um, what you're doing is you're taking care to create a, a transition from fully in focus to fully out of focus. And you can add up to six bugs, although I've never seen anyone use more than three in a practical sense. I, know I, I typically think of foreground, middle ground, and background. So unless you've got some crazy... Um, you know, um, curved, curvy path that has, um, that, that kind of crosses through all three planes, I don't see a reason for using more than three. You could. Um, like what we can do here is to control with a third one, let's add a third one here. Again, we'll go to planar. We will put it vertically over here on the same middle ground plane. And what was my opacity? It was at 69. So let's put this one at 69. And what I'm essentially doing is I'm matching this plane of focus here with this vertical plane of focus so that we have consistency. Does that make sense, guys? Um, this second focus bug is taking care of this uh, slice over here. But we didn't touch anything up here. So we can kind of m change the shape around so that we have consistency. Let me just see if there are any questions. Hassler has a question. So the normal bug places all items equally out of focus, but if one places the cursor in the bug, we alter the depth of focus. If you place your cursor in the body of the bug and you hit the option or alt key, you're simulating the, the uh, this kind of a shift in your plane of focus. So you can see we can kind of make this bug parallel to the wall. So what I'm going to do is put my option key. You see how when I hit the option key, the, the little black box goes from, it normally gives you the dimensions of your bug. So it's 880 pixels by 4,212 pixels. When I hold the option key, it changes to blur tilt. So what I can do is drag it so that you see how it's kind of becoming parallel to the wall. So that changes the characteristic. Yeah, it's option on a Mac Sol or alt on a PC while dragging inside of the bug. If you do it outside of the bug, nothing will happen. And conversely, what we could do is go to the second bug here and also change this plane of focus so that's parallel to the um, to the floor, or floor of the ground. So now we're really being consistent. And that's how you really go from, you know, from this image here to something like this. We can also add um, a vignette if we want just to kind of burn the edges. I'm not a fan of it. I don't want it. Reset the vignette. And there you go. How do you add the vignette? Just um, on, 
if you scroll down under the vignette palette, there's uh, there's a lightness which controls the strength of the vignette, and then the the midpoint controls just how close to the center it is. And if you want to get rid of it altogether, just hit the reset button, and it brings everything back to zero. So we can hit apply. And then it'll render all three bugs. Here's another quick tip. All right, we spent all this time making this selection. You see over here we have this selection. Um, let's say you want to kind of come back. You're not exactly sure. Let's say let's for whatever reason some client is is commissioning you to. Uh, work on this image and you present it to them and they say you know what um, I don't like how dark you made the background and I don't want as much of the background out of focus there so you come back now you're gonna have to go and make the go spend the time making this selection or in Photoshop you can actually save this selection as a channel so if I go to the channels palette, which again is if you go to window and then select channels, if you click on this icon right here that looks like a little layer mask icon, it creates an alpha channel. Now what does that mean? Well, as long as you save this as a layered PSD file or a TIFF file with layers, you can come back. So I deselected everything. And if I didn't have that uh, alpha channel, I'd have to go through, make my selections, remove the stuff, yada, yada. With the alpha channel, if I go to the alpha channel and I put my cursor in the thumbnail, so here's the thumbnail, and I press the option key on a PC or the, uh, no, the option key on a Mac or the alt key on a PC. Oops, not that. <laughs> Sorry. That's not what I want. I meant the command key. So the command key, I was looking at the wrong key the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC if you press that on the thumbnail it'll automatically load your selection as long as you saved it as an alpha channel first and so now what you can do is you can go back into focal point and keep working on it so that's just kind of a cool way to um, to kind of come back to it David brings up a point, can you just invert the selection back and save the barrier um, on a layer? You could. You absolutely could. Um, but it's all a matter of the reason why I kind of said you'd want to load the selection is because I would want to change in focal point the brightness and the contrast of the background in addition to the amount. And by just starting on a fresh layer with the same selection that I worked on originally, I, I can maintain consistency. But your option is totally viable as well. So Peter is saying that you, you're losing the aperture control. Let's go back into focal point. So let's deselect this layer here. I, I, I very rarely use the version 1, but let's see if it goes away. It, might, it very well might have been a feature that we introduced in version 2. So what, what Peter's bringing up is if we go to version 1, yeah, this goes away. Um, th this control was introduced in version 2, so it kind of becomes uh, deactivated. So if you want to control the um, actual, so right here, let's, let's bring up the highlight bloom just so I can show you. Let's zoom in just a bit in the background. It's a bit much. Okay. Oops, let me deselect this. Let me just cancel and go back in. I'll show you how you can use the aperture controls to control the actual shape of things like specular highlights. It's pretty cool. So if we zoom in a bit, and let's go up here. 
So these are our specular highlights. I brought the highlight bloom up really high so you can see them. Now you see how they're kind of uniformly circular back here. They kind of mirror whatever's in this preview box. So let's say I want to make this look like a five-sided star kind of. What I can do is I can go to change the sides, the number of blades in my aperture to five. And then I can bring in the curvature so that you can start to see that it's becoming a star and the specular highlights kind of take that shape. You can also rotate using the rotation slider. You can also do, you can do funky things. You can change this to a three-sided aperture and make triangles. You can also, and if you want them to be uniformly triangular, just bring the rotation so that you affect the pin cushion. So you can have fun with this, especially if it's like a darker night scene. So there you go. Now, focal point does support presets. So let's say this particular look is what you like. You like the brightness and the contrast to be the strength, um, the aperture controls uh, to be three-sided with this curvature and rotation. You can just save that as a preset and then come back and apply it, which is kind of nice. All right, let's work on another image. Uh, uh, let's hide this. Let's see what we got. I don't want that image. We can, let's, let's do this. This is going to be a little self-serving because I actually want to, this, I haven't worked. The only thing I did to this image was converted it to black and white. Um, I used a, a, a really dense neutral density filter to um, to kind of uh, see through the moving water. It still has a lot of dust that I have to clean up, but I could do that later. Um, Saul asks a good question is whether you can get the motion blur in version 2. Um, no, that was removed conscientiously. Um, that. Uh, from, so you can either do uh, version 1 with the motion blur, but then get, you don't have aperture control, or you could do version 2, which changes the overall uh, algorithm for how we render the blur. So here what we can do is I'm not going to protect anything. I just want to go in a focal point and see. What I want to do is kind of ch change my plane of focus um, so that I don't have all this information. Let me delete uh, these bugs here. Reset this. And let's put it here. Let's see what we can do with a round bug. And let's just to see, we'll bring the version to version one so we get the optical quality turns into motion. Let's see if we bring it to a negative space. It's not as apparent. If we bring it up, we bring the amount up. It kind of gives a little bit of a motion blur, but I don't feel like this works very well. And this is not so much a tilt shift look. This is more of a lens baby look when you're in a round shape. The planar is what, you'll, what will give you a, a tilt shift kind of look. And so here we would just change our plane of focus. I also find that planes of focus work best um, in horizontal strips against the, um, the image. I don't necessarily find it very appealing to have your plane of focus be vertical because it doesn't really make sense. If you were going for a lens baby look and you were doing spot focusing, so just this area is in focus, that's a different story. But I find that having a plane of focus that is in focus from the foreground through the background in a particular strip, like in this case the middle, whereas the left and the right are rendered out of focus, it loses um, some realism. And the effect itself, I don't feel the image gains anything from it. So be selective with how you, you use this product. In this case here, I'm just going to keep the foreground in focus. I don't like this mo the motion look that it's giving me, so I'm going to go back to version 2. And I'm going to adjust the feathering. The feathering controls, again, the transition. From in so watch, if we go to the, uh, if we show the mask, when we, so right now I'm at 20 feather. If I go to 0, you get a hard edge. And if we turn the mask off, 
you'll see that strip. However, if we increase, so let's bring it back to 20, it kind of creates a more of a gradual transition. And if you bring it to 100, there's almost a complete transition. So I don't necessarily care for that. We could, let's just go to 20 here. And now what I might do is just uh, drop the amount a little bit to restore some detail. You can boost the optical quality. It, what that'll do is it'll make it'll almost uh, simulate a, a higher quality uh, lens. So like almost like simulating L glass because the um, the bokeh area is uh, higher quality. There's more detail to it. And then I'll also kind of just refine this. So with the the focus brush selected, I'm just going to paint just along the bottom here, just to make sure that I get a little bit more of that, uh, the rock in focus. And I'll also paint this rock here in focus. I might just paint the whole foreground in focus because it doesn't look natural to have this area out of focus um, for the look that I'm trying to go for. You don't need to paint it in, a, that's the other thing, you don't need to paint in 100% opacity. I kind of brought that up earlier. You have right over here a brush opacity. So the first opacity slider you have is at the top, and that's the overall opacity of the bug. But then when you're painting focus or blur, you can control the gra how gradual that's uh, implemented by using this brush opacity. And you see the brightness and contrast slider. This is another important point. The brightness and contrast will only affect things outside of the bug. So this area here will not be uh, touched. So as I drop the brightness, See how it's only affecting the background? And what that does is the reason why that happens is it, by darkening everything outside of um, what's in focus, you draw attention to what's in focus. So a lot of times I will drop brightness a bit and I'll boost contrast. And right now the eye goes straight here. Over here, you, you know, you, your, the eye goes back and forth. And it could be good if there was something to lead the, you know, a reason to lead the eye through the frame. But the way I aligned my camera, I could have cloned this out, but I kind of, I didn't want to. I wanted to leave something there. And I think by rendering it out of focus, it adds a little bit more mystery to it. Like, what is that thing over there? When you have it fully in focus, you can see that it's just a little uh, rock. But when you put it out of focus, it, it could be, uh, you know, an alligator, it can be anything. I don't think there are any alligators in Martha's Vineyard, but I could be wrong. Um, um, so Hassler's asking, all right, do we tilt the, the plane of focus to be parallel to the surface? You could, absolutely. In this case here, you could because I, my camera was above the rock. So we could just put the cursor in here, press the Option or Alt key, and drag upward. And so with that, it's not as apparent here because um, we're not as high up. Let's recreate. I'll go to a different, let's cancel out here, and I'll go to a different webinar that we did um, two months ago where I, it, the, the whole webinar was comparing a tilt shift lens to focal point. So it's under, which webinar is it? To tilt or not to tilt images. Which image was it? It was, was it this one? Nope. I'll find it in a second. It was this one. All right, so let's open all three of these images in Photoshop. All right, so this image was taken with um, my tilt shift lens. This is in uh, Boston Common, or this is technically the this, this is the garden. This is the Boston Garden, and I was on this bridge, this walkway, a very very popular walkway. And this was taken uh, just a few months ago during the winter when the obviously the water was frozen over and people were ice skating on it. Now, with the tilt shift lens, I was able to change the plane of focus so that only this strip here, as you can see, this strip over here was in focus. And what that does is it, um, it gives the people um, a toy model look like they're little figurines. 
what I did then was I took another shot with the exact same lens. This was with, um, I think, either my 24 or my 17 tilt shift. But I did not tilt the lens. So this is the Im this is this uh, the exact image you would basically get if you shot. It. Let's assume this is a 17 millimeter lens. Actually, you know what? Just to be sure, let's just go to the uh, EXIF information. Oh, it's my 45. All right, it's my tilt my 45 tilt shift. So if you were to come up with any lens that can cover a 45 millimeter focal length this is the shot you would get. The entire image from foreground to background is in focus. With the tilt shift lens we were able to change our plane of focus to this area here. So let's take the image and let's recreate it in focal point to give the same look. So we're going to go to focal point. Let's reset our settings. And then right off the bat, let's change our shape from round to planar, and let's adjust it, and let's just put it over the people. We'll adjust our feathering so that the transition is a little bit um, less gradual. We'll drop the amount so that it's not as dramatic. And then let's change the uh, plane so that we put our cursor here, press the Alt or Option key, change the plane of focus, spread that out a bit so that we get just this area um, in focus here. Drop the brightness a bit, boost the contrast. And then what we might do is take our focus brush and just make sure that we have focus on this strip over here. You can see how they're popping off. And so all I'm going to do is just drag kind of straight across. This side too. Now, can you see how they're really looking like figurines? I mean, it, it, you can see by, if we show the mask, this is our mask. So what the darker areas are totally in focus and the, the white areas are totally out of focus and the gray is a transition. And so that's kind of how we create a tilt shift look without a tilt shift lens using focal point. Um, I'm just reading some of the questions here. Saul, I don't have a lens baby. I have a lens baby composer. I own one. I just don't have any images to compare it to. I have three tilt shift lenses, and that we were able to compare to. So I apologize for that. Can you use? Can one use two bugs with different tilts? Absolutely, uh, Chris. We we in that previous image of that barrier, we had um, the first focus bug was tilted parallel in the foreground, parallel to the sidewalk. The second bug was a little bit in the middle ground, also parallel to the uh, sidewalk. The third bug was the wall, the right wall, and that was parallel to the wall itself. So we had three bugs with two different tilts. Okay, so I see what Saul's asking about um, with portraiture. Yes, we can do that. So Saul wants to know if we can simulate um, like in, in a portrait, instead of so far, we've pretty much been using planar bugs, and we're we're approaching the end of the hour. I have no problem going over the hour. If you guys want to stick around with me, I'm not going to end it like we're in therapy, um, and your hour's over. If you're willing to stick around, um, I'm good to go. So let's let's do this. Um, it was in a different webinar. I want to say it was our portrait webinar. Let's go to portraits. Uh, let's find one that works well. Um, give me a second. Now this one will work. This one will work. This shot was taken in uh, at Carnival. I've used this before. This was taken by my friend Scott Stolberg out in California. Um, let's go into focal point here. And what we're going to do is we just want to keep the face in focus. Oh. Look at that. 
Photoshop. How embarrassing. Let's uh, let's let Photoshop crash digni with dignity, and then let's reopen it. All right. Let's change my brush to, from that weird pattern to a round pattern, and let's go on a focal point. See, no one's exempt from crashes, says Adobe. Let's reset everything, and here we're going to use a round bug. So I'm going to put the bug at, uh, on the face, and I'm going to tighten it up just so that it's about the shape of the face. Make it even a little bit smaller. Okay. Now here's the key with focal point. With you might be freaking out now, like wow, this image looks like garbage, and it does. The key with focal point, especially when you're using it for portraits, go away, crash reporter, is to have very small amounts. So right now the amount of blur is at 30, which is the default. If we drop that down really low to like maybe eight. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Now we're starting to get a little bit of a transition. It's clear that we're not going for planes of focus. We're going for selective focus. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make this a little bit smaller because I don't want that jewel in focus right now, or at least this pendant up here. So there are a few things we can do. First, we can use our focus brush, and then with a very small brush, just kind of paint alongside the mask and just make sure that we get that like the chin area here in focus just so that that's in focus here it, maybe even just outside the mask so you get a little bit of the fabric of the the hat that's too much let me undo that I don't like that but here for the uh, pendant what we can do is bring the amount of the opacity of that uh, focus brush and just kind of paint it in a little bit just so that we get a little bit more of that focus, a little bit up on this one as well. Maybe a bit more. But that's how we're able to kind of get this um, selective focus just on the face. We can use the highlight bloom slider because this person has these little specular highlights. Um, and then we can drop the dark in the background boost the contrast so that we really have focus on the on the mask if that's too much if it's too abrupt you can brighten it up a bit but my point is you have a lot of control on how to draw attention straight to um, the, the you know the point of focus so in this case here these people were kind of distracting if we turn the preview off you can see how it's much more there's more of an impact with focal point. So that's that's kind of how it is. Um, well, let me know if you if there are any other examples that you'd like to see. Uh, I'm not trying to rush off or anything, but uh, if you guys want to try something else, we can. I'd be happy to do that. Oh, Hassler, this will get posted. This we all of our webinars get posted. Uh, don't worry about that. I just, uh, two, the webinars from Monday and Tuesday of this week, I just uploaded to our servers. Now I just need to get them posted onto our website and then in iTunes and YouTube. All right, let's see. Maybe there's one more we can work on. Uh, let's do this one. We'll do the wedding one. The wedding one is like, this is this one always gets oohs and ahs. You might have seen it already because we a lot of times we'll do it in our... Uh, now that's weird. Why didn't my oh Photoshop crashed? That's right. So Photoshop crashed. I'll fix it later. But the background would have been darker and it didn't retain the settings. I know the traffic scene that you're talking about, Hassler. Um, and Steve, Steve saying that this would be good for food photography. Y you know it um, absolutely, one hundred percent. We know a lot of uh, commercial food pr uh, photographers who use focal point because here's the thing. This is actually a good example of the point I want to make. With focal point, you can err on the side of caution. So what do I mean by that? I can shoot this image here of this bride and groom 
and this shot was taken by Fred Marcus Studios actually in New York City. I could shoot it with a smaller aperture which will give me everything in focus. Now, whether or not I want everything in focus or whether or not I need everything in focus, I don't want to make necessarily that judgment call. The key is I don't have to worry that I missed my focus. So a lot of times people buy their 50 millimeter, their 85 millimeter, 1.2, 1.4 aperture lenses, lenses that are extremely fast and lenses that give you razor sharp and razor narrow depth of fields. You have to have serious stones to have comfort that you can get a particular plane of focus at 1.2 um, and not, like a better example if you were to shoot a model, a headshot, and one eye is in focus, but the other eye, the head was tilted just enough that it's out, it's, it's soft. Well, guess what? That shot is ruined for the most part. You can try to bring some, back some detail with sharpness with a, um, a uh, what was that filter called? The um, under sharpen, I can't, the unsharp. I, it, it's the weirdest name, but you can add an unsharp mask. Um, the point is, I err on the side of caution. I'd rather shoot with a, a smaller aperture, know that I've got everything in focus, and then here, let's do this. We're going to go, what we have is a ch alpha channel selected. So what's selected is the dance floor. I want my couple to be in focus 100%. And I could go to focal point, and again, I could just, let's reset this. Let's put our planar bug We'll just change the orientation around and put it on the foreground so that they're on the dance floor. So right off the bat, now I can simulate some stuff. I can simulate a lens, like I, go, I can go to the 35 millimeter 1.4. I can boost the highlight bloom of the background. I can drop brightness and contrast, boost the highlight bloom some more to bring it back. And then I can actually add a vignette. And we can control all kinds of things. We can make the bug a little bit wider if we want some more of the backgrounded focus. But we went from this to this in two seconds because all we did was we made it, we protected our couple. It is bug therapy, Chris. How did you select the subject? Um, just like this. We'll cancel out a focal point. I used a quick select brush and just kind of drew on the subject. And then I would refine it. Now, earlier in the webinar, I, I showed how you can save a selection as an alpha channel just by going to your channels palette and clicking on this little icon here that uh, it looks like a circle inside of a square. To load it, just put your cursor in the thumbnail of the alpha channel, press the command or control key, and it loads that selection. So I'll do that a lot when I'm demoing images because it's you know it takes time to make a good selection, especially with this image. 